Hey everybody, welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Sarah Lean. In this tutorial, I'm aiming to show you how you can use Octopus Deploy Runbooks to deploy your Azure Bicep templates. Now this tutorial doesn't cover how to create or build or write your Azure Bicep files, so you do have to have some knowledge around that first of all. But hopefully you do find this tutorial helpful and please do check out our description section where we'll have more resources around how to use Octopus Deploy Runbooks with Azure Bicep. So as I said, we're not going to go into any specifics around Bicep, but here I have my Visual Studio Code open and I have the folder with all of my Bicep files and templates in. What I have here is a main Bicep template that then calls Bicep modules to deploy my infrastructure. So I have that main Bicep template and then four other Bicep templates that are being used to call in from a module perspective. Now, what we need to do in order to consume these with Insight Octopus Deploy is zip them up into a zip file. Now, what I'm going to use is the Octopus Deploy CLI tool to pack that up and then push it into my Octopus Deploy instance. However, you could do this with your continuous integration tool. So if you are storing your bicep templates in, say, for example, GitHub, you could use GitHub Actions to pack that up into a zip file and push it into your Octopus Deploy um, instance as well. So there are options. So you can either go with the manual process of using um, Octopus Deploy CLI from your own machine, or you could be using um, your CI tooling to help you do this process. So the first thing I need to do is actually take these files and put them inside a zip file. Now, as I said, I'm going to use Octopus Deploy CLI to do that. So I initiate the octopack command, which puts it all into a zip file for me and gives me a version for it as well. So let's hit enter here. Now, what has happened is we've created that separate output folder. So it's called output. And then inside that zip file called octobicep files 0.0.1, we now have our bicep files. And you'll be able to see this down the left hand side here. So we've got that output folder and we've got that file as well inside it. Now, what we want to do is actually get that file from my machine to my Octopus Deploy instance. So let's issue that command. That command is the octo push command, and I'm pushing that into my Octopus Deploy um, instance and space that I need that package there. My zip file is now inside my Octopus instance. And as I said, you can do this um, manually from your own machine, or you could build it into your um, CI tool and have that do that for you. So let's swap over to our Octopus instance and have a look at this file. So as we can see here inside our library, we now have that octobicep files dot, um, zip file. So we can now utilize that inside our Octopus environment. So if we head over into our project, and go into a runbooks area, we can see we already have um, a runbook that will delete all of our infrastructure from our uh, Azure environment. So we have that. But what we need to create is that one that creates all of our infrastructure using our bicep templates. So let's click on add runbook. As you can see, I've now given my runbook a name and I've also given it some descriptions so that my peers and my colleagues and even myself will know what it actually does um, when next time I check it. So let's save this and create this runbook. We now have our runbook and we want to define the process, define the steps that it will actually carry out to deploy our in infrastructure. So let's click on define your runbook process. Now we need to add steps to our runbook. So we click on add step and we'll get started. So the first step we want to do is actually create an Azure resource group. So what we want to do here is run an Azure script that will do that for us. So I've given this new step a name and now we want to start to actually configure it so that it can carry out that instruction so as it can create our resource group. Now we have our own workers in the background that have all the necessary tooling to be able to deploy um, to Azure from it. So we have the right PowerShell modules, we have the right Azure CLI commands, etc. installed. So that's something that you need to bear in mind and um, be aware of that you have to have the right tooling installed and you'll have to maybe have a look at what tools are installed on your worker. I'm using my Windows Runbooks um, worker pool because I know that they have the tooling that I need installed. 
So I'm just linking my Azure account, which is actually stored inside a variable inside Octopus so that I can um, call that whenever I need it. I don't have to remember all of that information. So I'm putting that in um, and you'll have to do likewise as well. So the, um, the step knows which Azure subscription and has permissions to it to carry out the actions. Now I'm using a simple Azure CLI command here and um, using some Octopus variables again that are stored inside Octopus to actually just create my resource group. So it's going to create it based on the variable around what I've set in terms of Azure location and um, what I want the resource group name to be. So now that we've got the um, Azure resource group step created, we wanted to create another one where we actually start to deploy those bicep files and create the infrastructure. So we click on add step. And once again, we're looking for the Azure script step here. Again, my step has now got a name and we have to start to configure it. So once again, I'm using that Windows Runbook worker pool. And now I need to um, associate my Azure account again for this step. So again, I will use that variable that I have set up. And then inside the, the command line that I want to carry out, we will put in our PowerShell script. Now, there are various parts to this PowerShell script. So let's just walk through what they actually do. The first bit um, associates and tells Octopus and tells this step that we have a package that we need to actually use as part of this step um, and the process that's going to be carried out. And it will actually extract the files from our um, zip file as well. Now, the next step goes into the file directory where the extracted package is. This next step where we are setting the deployment name is around um, identifying it inside Azure and making sure that we have the correct syntax and the correct components to be able to deploy our Azure um, bicep templates. And then the last step is actually the PowerShell script that deploys those bicep templates. Now you'll notice that it does actually go on quite a lot in terms of across the screen. There's a lot to that information. But what I'm doing here is telling the the deployment step to um, take my bicep templates and deploy the infrastructure inside that Azure resource group. And then I'm defining some parameters. I'm defining some variables that I need to have inside that, such as the um, Azure web app SKU that I'm going to be using for the web apps that I'm deploying, the SQL Server um, name that I'm using, all those kind of components that you need in terms to deploy the, bi the bicep templates and that infrastructure as well. This code, if you're looking for it, um, will be linked to in the description. So please do check that out and you can have a, a look at that and grab that for your own uses as well. And the next part that we have to um, configure is just um, including that reference package. So we need to just associate again that package with this step. So if we reference the package, we look for the package ID. We've only got one package um, so far in our library. So we click on that at the moment and it associates that. If this is something new to you, um, referencing a package inside a custom script with inside Octopus, please don't worry. We do have documentation that covers all of this and we can share that with you and help you um, learn more about this step. Now that we have created our resource group and hopefully deployed all of our infrastructure, what we want to do is actually register this new infrastructure. So these new web apps that they were deploying um, with Octopus so that they're part of our infrastructure and Octopus knows um, where to deploy our application to and how to do that as well. So we click on add a step again. This time we're looking for the run a script step. We have three web apps that we need to register. So what we're going to do is call this script something that makes sense. So in this case, I'm doing calling it register product service web app. I then want to configure this to run once on a worker. And again, I'm going to select my Windows Run Book worker pool for the step to actually um, be carried out by. Now, don't worry if you haven't seen this script before. It is in our documentation about how to register deployment targets using this script. So I'll make sure that I leave a link to the documentation in the description box. So please do check that out. I need to configure this step for two other web apps. So let me go and do that and then I'll join you back in a minute. 
So I now have all the steps inside this run book that I need to be able to deploy my infrastructure to Azure and then register those three web apps that I have just deployed with Octopus. So let me save this run book. And we're now ready to run that. So let's kick that process off. So our run book has completed successfully and we should be able to see all of our infrastructure not only registered inside Octopus Deploy, but we could be able to see it inside Azure. Since we're in Octopus, let's have a look at the infrastructure tab and make sure that the infrastructure is all registered for our use. So here we have those new registered deployment targets. So those three web apps that we created with our Azure Bicep templates are now registered as deployment targets inside Octopus Deploy. Switching over to our Azure environment, here we can see we are inside our resource group that we created and we have all of our infrastructure, the SQL Server, the App Service Plan, the SQL Database and the three um, web apps that we needed as well. Now, if we click on um, deployments here, we can see a bit more detail around this. Now, you can see all of the actions that were carried out in the deployments. If you notice the bottom one, it says Octo Pet Shop Infra and then has the date there. That was what we were explaining to you um, inside the Octopus um, Runbook step, where we were saying we were defining the deployment name. So we've got that reference there just so that we can have some traceability inside Azure and also comply with what we need to be able to use or have for our deployment of Bicep template. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hopefully this demo has helped you understand how you can actually use Octopus Runbooks to deploy your Azure Bicep files. Um, please do leave us a comment if you have any questions or any concerns or any feedback on this video in the comment section. And do check out the description box where we've left some information about how you could potentially try this demo inside your Octopus environment as well. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and hopefully catch you in another video.